my prologue will be the genealogy because genes and environment are what made me what I am today. So we'll start off with the first picture of my mother that was done about a hundred years ago with her about three months old and her sister Martha at that time. We'll then show pictures of my dad and mother when they were at LSU as students. I was born in Biggs, California on June 19, 1919. The town was pretty uh, small then, uh, had, having one main street that was paved and a population probably of around 500. And by the time I uh, grew up, it was still 500. And as an adult, when I go back down, it's now 750, so it hasn't grown very much. Uh, the, the oak tree that was in our front yard was, was uh, a huge tree. It, uh, a huge tree that, as an adult, it took me 17 paces to walk around the tree, and it was supposedly the second largest oak tree in California, being second only to the uh, tree up in the Chico State Park. My uh, memories of, uh, of uh, Biggs as a child were many fold. The funniest, I think, is that I was called Buzz Around Buzzy because I was so busy uh, filling up potholes with my wagon and shovel, uh, the gravel that I would, and people would see me and uh, wave and holler. I had a real good time. The other memories that I have include uh, ha knowing that it flooded occasionally in Biggs, and this one time I, the, fl the water was coming up in the town from the Feather River, uh, about six inches deep around the house, so I thought I'd go see where the water was coming from, and I went down the down the road towards the Feather River, and the closer I got, it was a matter of a, probably two or three miles over there, and I got about halfway over, and the water started coming up above my knees, and, and I began getting worried. About that time, a truck came along, and the, the guy leaned out and said, does your daddy know where you are? And I said, no, and he said, well, I think you better come back to town with me. And so I hopped in 
happy to get out of there because the water was getting deeper all the time. In fact is, some of the houses were built on, uh, on stilts, the same way they are, were in Louisiana later on because of the flood, floods that took place back then. Uh, I hate to mention this, but we lived in about five or six different houses over a period of 10 years in Biggs, and the problem was that they always seemed to burn down. And uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't my fault, I don't think, and I don't think it was mother's, it was just bad luck. The, uh, how, however, I'd better admit that there was my neighbor, a neighbor boy friend was down uh, with me playing in front of the house and we were playing fireman so that uh, I would throw a match out and it'd start burning the dry stubble and then we'd take the hose and put out the fire. Well, we kept doing that and finally got where the hose wouldn't reach and the fire kept right on going. And we had about a 10 acre plot of land, a stubble over to the uh, west of it. And that was a, a pretty big fire and it, uh, the, the uh, um, volunteer fire department came and they were, everyone was, uh, running around with water trying to put out the fire and I was helping and the little boy kind of made me mad because the little boy ran away when he saw what happened to the fire. And I kept on helping people until I heard one of them say, well, if they ever catch the person who started this, it's going to be tough on him. So I, I hid. I crawled under the house and hid till it was all over. <laughs> and there was no, uh, no real problem after that. They didn't know who did it. The uh, other thing I remember that was a uh, was really a lot of fun was the uh, there was a barn near our house which was on the edge of town. The barn door had fallen off and one day when my dad and mother must have been away I got in the car that was there and and drove put hooked up the barn door to the rear of the car with a rope and got three or four friends to come sit on the barn door and I pulled the barn door around like a trailer all over part of the west part of town and uh, it was a lot of fun and everyone enjoyed it and again, fortunately, nobody, uh, nobody saw us, and so there were no repercussions. But driving, the, driving a bunch of kids around like that in, under the age of uh, 10 was, uh, in hindsight, pretty scary. Let's stop for a minute. I'm ready to talk about picking prunes in California. As a youngster, I uh, had an opportunity to pick prunes in the orchards around Biggs one summer, and they paid kids at that time 10 cents a box, and you could pick up about 10 boxes a day so that you could make a dollar a day. And uh, I worked for about 10 days and made uh, uh, $10 and used that money to, uh, with a little, probably a little added from my dad, ordered a bicycle from Monkey Wards down in Oakland. It came up, uh, they came up on the train, we put it together and I got on the bicycle and rode around, and uh, about a month later, I, I was riding around the corner and couldn't quite make the corner well, and ran into a tree and crumpled the front tire and that, the front wheel, and that was the end of the bicycle ride. Uh, 
uh, school I don't remember very much about. Uh, I, I must have been pretty good because I skipped the third grade and then I skipped the fifth grade. Uh, sports I was not very good at. Uh, I remember on a May Day race that uh, uh, we were running a 50-yard dash and I, I uh, got off to a great start and closed my eyes and was just pumping along real fast and kind of peeked around back to see how many I was leaving behind. There was nobody behind me. Everyone was ahead of me. <laughs> I thought this was unique to me, but actually, uh, William Soroyan wrote in his, in a book, My Name is Aram, wrote this absolutely the similar story, how he had uh, closed his eyes and thought he was ahead and he wasn't. The uh, sports, the only, the main sports that we were involved in back then was uh, in baseball. Uh, every summer we played baseball. Uh, in fact, the, the whole town played baseball, uh, but the kids' uh, team, uh, by grades, uh, was one that I played, and I was a catcher, and my main ambition then at that time was to be a ca catcher for the uh, New York Yankees, I remember that. It never worked out, but uh, at least I had uh, ambitions. So in about 1929, when I was 10 years old, my mother and father uh, separated, and my mother uh, took, uh, went with me and my sister to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, to live with my grandparents, the grandparents Stumberg. That's the end of chapter two. Okay. In Baton Rouge, we went to live with my grandfather and grandmother Stumberg. And I should take a few minutes to talk about my grandfather Stumberg because he was probably the most influential person in, in uh, my development. He was a, a quiet, studious type person who was friendly but not a hail fellow well met. He was... Uh, wise and he was knowledgeable and he was uh, back in those days he got his master's degree at the University of Missouri and became a teacher in 1895 at Louisiana State University. Uh, he held many different jobs at the university starting off with including the teaching of French and German and Latin, and uh, he uh, was the first librarian of the Hill Memorial Library, which was a gift from the Hill family. Uh, he had not really was not a librarian, but he was uh, able to, uh, because of his experience run the library uh, and accounted for his home having a special room that was the library and had hundreds and hundreds of books on all three sides of the room. The, um, he also held numerous jobs of, uh, at the university and uh, was helpful to me in, in, uh, in making sure that I was a good student and uh, made good grades. The, um, the first pictures that I remember or have are of my two double first cousins, uh, uh, Wingate Jr., who we call Tyke, T-Y-K-I-E, I guess, and Nancy Ann. 
and then later later picture shows uh, all five of us children along with a couple of others that were uh, I think relatives but uh, you can you will see that uh, that the uh, we five are in there and uh, this this these this was important because we five lived together for a couple of years and my grandfather and grandmother would take us on trips every summer somewhere uh, I never ceased to be amazed at how these old people accepted and handled the five grandchildren coming in to their lives at a time when they had essentially reached ready to reach retirement age. Uh, I have a picture in there in Baton Rouge of the uh, of the Tyke and and Nancy and David, the other double first cousin, with their dad at a time when they were uh, pretty much uh, in high school, grown up. Tyke was a real was real smart young man.